These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There's a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos dot htm. Or you can just use the link in the info box. Thank you. Some nucleuses, uh, well, let's make sure we understand the basic ideas. Uh, what is an atom made out of? Particles. particles. Like what particles? Where are they? The protons and the neutrons are in the nucleus. Right. And where's the electrons? Flying around. Flying around. Or orbiting around. Right. Although perhaps it's better to think of those as clouds of electrons that are around the nucleus. So it kind of looks like this. However, this is not to scale because, in fact, um, well, first of all, so where's most of the mass of the atom? In fact, almost all of it, because the electrons have negligible mass compared to the protons in the nucleus. But who takes up all the space? The electrons. Yeah, maybe you've heard this analogy that if the atom was a baseball stadium, the nucleus would be like a fly in the center of the baseball stadium. So the nucleus is very small compared to the entire atom, and, but it has almost all the mass packed into it. Uh, what is the mass of a proton? Um, it's like one point, no, wait, mass of a proton? The proton neutrons at 1.67 times 10 to the negative 27 kilograms. Okay, good. Now we have to think about that in terms of units. It's approximately one atomic mass unit, which is a unit that we're commonly using in this chapter. And in atomic mass units, what's the mass of a neutron? So approximately one, although you're right that they're not exactly the same. But you might have to convert these into kilograms, so you need to know where that conversion is uh, in your book. Should be in the back cover. Masses, or maybe the front cover. Oh yeah, here we have the atomic mass units. So what's the conversion between atomic mass units and kilograms? So this is our equivalency between one atomic mass unit, four, and kilograms. So you have to be careful when you're thinking about masses about what unit you're using, atomic mass units or kilograms. Now, an electron is often said to have a mass of zero AMU, but it's not literally zero, it's just very small compared to these. So who are the nucleons? That's right. So which particles are those? Like, are those alpha, beta, or no? Or so which particles, uh, based on our, our review, which particles are in the nucleus? Well, the protons and the neutrons. Those are the nucleons. Oh, that's right. Oh. Okay. <laughs> so nucleons is a fancy name for the two particles that live in the nucleus, which is the protons and the neutrons. Now, those idea of beta particles and alpha particles, those are particles that are uh, expelled from the nucleus when it's breaking up, but we don't think of them as living in the nucleus. They're created during decay. Okay. And we probably won't have time to talk about that too much because we're going to focus on the binding energy. Okay. All right. Um, so uh, we have to note that the nucleons are the protons and the neutrons, but not the electrons. So for example, we have to understand how to interpret these symbols. What do these numbers here mean? I mean, sorry, atomic number, and the other one is mass yep. number. Which is which? I think, is it atomic on top? Actually on the bottom. Oh, okay. So the bottom number here is called Z, and the top number is called A. But this is not the atomic number. This is the mass number. So it's poor use of symbols. A is, looks like atomic, but it's really the mass right. number. And Z is the atomic number. The atomic number gives you very precise information. It tells you how many protons are in the nucleus. 
Atomic number means the number of protons. Atomic number is the number of protons. So, um, and now the mass number is usually given in AMUs, not kilograms, because those are so small. So, um, how would you normally calculate the mass number, do you think, of a nucleus? If that's the total mass of the nucleus. How could we calculate that in atomic mass units, approximately? Well, how to actually calculate it? For example, um, we might have, say, a nucleus that has uh, five protons and seven neutrons. What would be its mass number? Twelve. There you go. So that's what I was asking. How, how would we calculate the mass number? Um, it's the protons plus the neutrons, because they both have a mass of approximately one. So the mass number here would be twelve. Now, pretty soon we're going to see that we can't always use these approximations. Sometimes we have to be precise. But also there's many applications where we do use the approximations. Uh, usually when you say mass number, you mean the approximate mass. So this would be 12 AMUs is that mass number. What's the atomic number of carbon? How could we figure that out? Yeah, how would you figure that out? Where do you find that in your periodic table? Um, that's just, uh, well, let me ask you this, maybe one you don't know. What's the atomic number, say, of um, the atomic number of rubidium? Can we look it up? Yeah, but I just want to make sure you guys know where to, where to find that. That's RB. What's its atomic number? Atomic number? 37. 37. Yeah, not 85.47. That's what I asked. Okay, yeah. So the atomic number in your periodic table is above uh, the symbol. Uh, below you have the mass. Now why is that mass not an integer? It seems like masses should always be integers, right? Because uh, we're just adding a bunch of ones. Um, well, isn't it based on its isotopes? Yeah. Every single isotope has an integer mass, but that mass is the average of all the different isotopes. So the, uh, that's usually called the atomic weight. So the atomic weight from the periodic table doesn't have to be an integer. But in this chapter, we're going to be focusing on one particular isotope at a time. And that particular isotope will have a set number of protons and neutrons, so its mass number will be an approximate integer. So you can't get the mass number from the periodic table, because the periodic table gives you an average of all the isotopes. It doesn't give you the mass number for any particular isotope. Uh, okay, so um, if you look at carbon, it has an atomic number of 6. So how many neutrons does carbon-14 have? Okay, I just want to make sure we're familiar with that, that simple math. This is not the number of neutrons. It's neutrons plus protons. So if you subtract these, you would find eight neutrons for that. By the way, this is another way that you could write in words carbon-14. So when they say an element plus a number, the number is not the atomic number, and it's not the number of neutrons, it's the mass number. That's the convention. So carbon-13 would have a atomic mass, would be the isotope with an atomic mass. Well, let's do carbon-13. Carbon-13 What number should I put up here for carbon-13? 13. Yeah, and which number down here? Six. So the number of neutrons is? Seven. 13 minus 6 is 7. So what's the relationship, that, what's the word that tells us the relationship between carbon-14 and carbon-13? How are they related to each other? What, what do we call? Oh, the isotopes? Yeah. I just wanted to make sure we're familiar with those basic terms. These are isotopes. So what's the definition of isotopes? Well, it's the same element, but different mass. They would have different masses, but a more basic definition is the same element, but different numbers of neutrons. Okay. It's having different numbers of neutrons that make you um, isotopes. What makes them the same element? What determines what element you are? The number of protons. That's right. The element depends on the number of protons. Not the number of electrons or the number of neutrons, but just the number of protons. That's why these are both carbon. They're both carbon because they've got the same atomic number, which is the number of protons. That's why the number of protons is called the atomic number, because it determines which element or atom you are. All right, so isotopes have the same number of protons and different numbers of neutrons. And that, again, is why the numbers in the periodic table are averages of a bunch of different isotopes. Now, 
the number of electrons doesn't have to equal the number of protons, only in a neutral atom. If this was, uh, so if this was neutral, how many electrons would it have? If this was neutral, how many electrons would it have? Six. Six, that's right. But if it had a negative one charge, how many electrons would it have? Seven. Seven. Or if it had a positive one charge, how many electrons would it have? Five. Okay, so the number of electrons is only equal to the number of protons if you have a neutral element. Um, but if this has a charge, it's still carbon. Because remember, the element depends on the number of protons, not the number of electrons. It would just be carbon plus or carbon minus. However, in this chapter, we're usually focusing on nucleuses. So we usually disregard the electrons. We're thinking of this as a bare nucleus with no electrons, or disregarding the electrons. <laughs>